Hey guys, uh, welcome to this video. Today I want to make a knife destruction test and I want to find out which is the toughest steel. So here you can see my original APO1 knife. It's um, the first survival knife that I've created. So here you can see that it says APO1 and um, it's the same design. So it has the same thickness and the same saber grind and the same handle. So the only difference in these three knives is the steel. And today I want to do a destruction test, which is really, really intense uh, in order to find out which of these steels is the most um, robust and the toughest one. So the first one is called Aus 8. It has a reputation of being very uh, tough. It bends rather than breaking and it's made in Japan. The second knife here is made from SK85. It's also produced in Japan and it's a carbon steel. <laughs> and one time I've cut open a, a packaging of sausages and I forgot to dry it off. So I put it like this into the sheath and then uh, this is how it rusted overnight. So yeah, that's the downside of carbon steels. So they easily get uh, rusty spots. Now this knife here is made from K110 tool steel uh, produced by the company Bola. It's a half rusting half not rusting blade so it's half stainless steel and half not. And I had this knife with me in Costa Rica and after a few days at the seaside it started to rust like this. So if you want to get a knife which is not rusting like this then uh, stainless steel is always a good option. Now I've used this knife multiple times, at least for half a year. Uh, this knife I've used three weeks and this knife I have only used one time. Now before we are going to destroy these knives, first I want to talk about the cutting edge uh, retainability. The OS 8 steel and the SK85 steel, they hold an edge but not for super long. So it's like a medium uh, edge retention I would say. So you will have to sharpen these knives more often. Now the K110 steel holds the edge for a really long time but also then it needs more time to sharpen it again. So these two knives are easier to sharpen than this steel. But this steel here is holding the edge for a longer time. So as you can see there's no perfect steel because with every property that also comes a disadvantage. Okay, next I want to discuss the topic of hardness. So these two knives, they have a medium hardness and this steel here is much harder than the other ones. So it probably will break more easily because harder knives are less tough and more brittle. Now, before we are going to destroy these knives, I want to say one more thing. So this is the old model, the old APO1. And the old model had a shorter handle it had a shorter blade and also it had a thinner tip. The new model here, which is the APO1S, has a longer handle, a longer blade and also a thicker tip. Okay, so here you can see the difference. The handle is longer, the blade is longer and the tip is a little bit thicker. So the new model is taking even more abuse than these three knives here. Okay, now let's start with a destruction test and let's see which of these knives is the toughest?
cannot destroy the tip with this normal test. Okay, I could not destroy the tip. It's a really good steel. Okay, so all of the knives passed the tip strength test. And um, if you use those steels in a normal matter, uh, they should not let you down. But now I want to do a destructive test and I want to bang the knives on this concrete brick here. Okay, so now I want to show you the damage on the edge and the blade after I've backed them onto concrete. So this was the first one, K110. The tip is still intact. The edge has a little bit of damage. The back looks okay. Next one is the SK85. It has taken some significant damage here at the edge. Back also has a little bit of more damage, but the tip is intact. OS8. Yeah, it has some damage on the blade too, on the secondary bevel. and on the back. So right now I have to say that the K110 looks really good and maybe it looks the best out of all of the steels right now. Okay, next I want to make the knives with this iron bar. K110 K110 broke pretty fast. This is how the knives look after the iron bar test. Yeah, 
This is the Broken K110. I gotta say that the edge still looks very good. The back is only a little bit damaged, but it broke. The SK85 has a pretty messed up edge. And the back also took some damage. The edge of the OS8 steel is also quite deformed, similar to the SK85. But the backside looks a little bit better, I have to say. So, yeah. So basically, we can say that OS8 and SK85 have a similar damage. Okay, guys. So, K110. It took 11 bags on the edge. The edge looks still very good. And then I took one, two, three wags on the back. And that is when the knife broke. So, is K110 a bad steel? No, it's not. But it's harder and it's also more brittle than the others. And that's what you have to know. Now, the other two steels here are vacked on the iron bar really good. Uh, much longer than the K110. And neither of those broke. And they are really tough knives. Also, the hardness is a little bit uh, lower than the hardness of the K110, but also the steel composition is tougher. And this is why um, these two steels are really good for survival knives. So carbon steel and OS8 in stainless uh, are really great to take some abuse without breaking. And yes, you have to sharpen them more often, but all those harder steels that keep the edge for a very long time, they are prone to breaking. And I've seen that many times. Yeah, it broke pretty fast. And this is why I also don't like this super hardened super steel because um, they can break. And the last thing that you want in a survival situation is a broken knife. And I mean, it really broke off right after the finger guard. So, this is now completely useless. You can only skin with this knife blade anymore, but you cannot chop anymore, you cannot baton anymore. So, yeah, you would still have a slicing tool in a survival situation, but for um, bigger woodwork, this is, yeah, it's not suitable anymore. So, you know, I always liked OS8 and carbon steel for the toughness. And, this is what my experience also told me that um, I never had any chips or knife breaks with these knives, but with the harder knives I always had, um, you know, small chips and small tip breaks. And I believe this is the proof that the Rockwell hardness of about 57 plus minus one is the best for survival knives. And also, uh, I don't think it matters if you take carbon steel or OS8 stainless steel. They are both really tough steels and you won't break them easily. Okay guys, so these are my findings on uh, today's destruction test. How do you think about it? Do you think that uh, hard knives that hold the edge for a very long time are the way to go? Or do you think that maybe knives that have a medium hardness are a better choice for survival knives? Uh, let me know in the comment section below. I want to thank you for watching. Stay tuned till next time.